The average credit score in the US is 716. That's up 25 points from a decade ago. Despite this, there's still a lot of people struggling to raise their credit score. This number could help you save thousands and unlock opportunities for you like buying a house or getting the best credit cards. If you're still on your credit building journey, you can't afford to get off course. That's why I've compiled a list of common mistakes that destroy your credit score. First up, not paying your bills on time. This one's pretty straightforward, but I think it needs to be said. Late payments and payments that get sent to collections destroy your credit. Since payment history is the single greatest factor when it comes to calculating your score at 35%, it should come as no surprise that failure to pay your bills on time has an outsized impact. Credit scores are used to assess a borrower's likelihood to pay, so if you want to be taken seriously by lenders, you have to pay your bills on time. Late payments and non-payments also sit on your credit report for an extended period of time, up to seven years, so they can continue hurting your credit well into the time after they occurred. Canceling older credit cards. This one is for those of us who have had a credit card for a few years and are thinking about canceling it in favor of a better card. While it may be tempting to keep your credit card collection simple by canceling unused cards, this can negatively affect your credit score in two ways. First, canceling a credit card, especially an older one, affects your average age of accounts. This is the average length of time your credit accounts have been open. For example, let's say I have three credit cards. One I've had for three years, one I've had for two, and one I've had for 10. Add up the years, divide by three cards, and my average age of accounts is five years. Now if I cancel the card I've had for 10 years, my average age of accounts would drop to two and a half years. This is a simple example, but it's a much bigger deal for older accounts. I've had my oldest card for 17 years, so canceling it would significantly lower my average age of accounts and overall credit age. Your credit age accounts for 15% of your score, so it does matter overall. The second issue of canceling your card is that it lowers your overall available credit, which affects your credit utilization rate. Your credit utilization rate, or CUR, is the amount of available credit you have versus the amount of credit that you're using. This accounts for 30% of your score, which can have a huge impact. Here's some more math. Say you have three credit cards, one with a $2,000 limit, one with a $5,000 limit, and one with a $3,000 limit for a total credit limit of $10,000. Now let's say you have a total credit card balance of $2,500. This will put you at a credit utilization rate of 25%, which isn't great, but it doesn't exceed 30%, which is where a CUR starts to really negatively affect your score. Now let's look at what would happen if you decided to cancel your $2,000 card. Your combined credit limit will go down to $8,000, and your CUR would rise to 31.25%, taking it over that 30% threshold. While a 31% CUR may not spell complete disaster for your credit score, anything that raises your utilization too high can ultimately have a negative impact on it. And speaking of impact, I'm trying to have the most positive impact I can on the most people with this channel in 2023. My goal here is to give you the tools and information that you need to level up and gain greater control over your life. So if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe for more content. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment. I read every comment and I really appreciate your feedback. Thanks in advance. Now let's talk about carrying a credit card balance and making minimum payments. I've mentioned this in other videos, but carrying a credit card balance is typically a bad idea. Not only do you pay insane interest on your balance, but carrying a credit card balance is another factor that increases your credit utilization. This requires you to make more than the minimum payment and ideally paying the balance in full. Everyone's situation is different, but ideally you wouldn't buy anything on your credit card that you can't pay for in cash. As I mentioned before, a good credit utilization is 30%, and a great credit utilization is between 1% and 10%, so it's critical that you do your best to keep your balances low. Maxing out credit cards falls in line with my last point, but has a greater effect on your credit. Maxing out your card sends your credit utilization to 100%, which means you're essentially tapped out when it comes to available credit on your revolving accounts. Maxing out a credit card can happen for several reasons, but this typically communicates that you're either in financial trouble and need a credit card to survive, or you're bad at controlling your spending. Either way, maxing out your cards can have significant impact on your credit as utilization accounts for 30% of your score. Next, applying for new credit. You ever get an offer at a store to save 10% on your purchase when applying for a new credit card? Yeah, me too, and I used to apply for a lot of them. The problem with this is typically every time you apply for new credit, you get a hard inquiry on your credit report. While it's normal and expected to have some inquiries on your credit report as you do things like get a credit card, buy a car, apply for a rental property or a mortgage, or even go through the hiring process for a job, when you have a lot of inquiries at one time, lenders view you as more risky and it may affect your credit score in the short term. Inquiries account for 10% of your score and stay on your credit report for up to two years. While their effect on your score will diminish over that two years, it's important to avoid applying for new credit around the time that you're going for a bigger loan, like an auto loan or a mortgage. Something to keep in mind here is that not all credit inquiries are hard inquiries, and sometimes soft inquiries can occur even for credit card applications. 
In these inquiries, your credit report is pulled, but that pull is not reported to the credit bureaus. This happens when you check your own credit, and even some lenders do this when they're trying to get you pre-approved for a loan. It's pretty easy to hurt your credit score, but raising it can feel like a monumental task. That's why I share how I managed to raise my credit score from 530 to over 800 in this video here.